Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about the debugger in Eclipse. And if you're not familiar with the debugger, um, it's a very powerful tool that allows us to examine what's happening as our code executes. So um, I'm going to talk about it in terms of this example class I wrote. It's nothing too complicated. It has to do with the Fibonacci sequence, which if you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, is um, it's a sequence of numbers that you get by adding the two previous terms. So um, with our, for example, here in this code, we can see it starts off with 1, 1, and then we get 2, which is 1 plus 1, and then 3, which is 1 plus 2, and then 5, which is 2 plus 3, etc. As you can see, it goes on. If you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, I encourage you to look into it a little bit to understand what's happening, because I have found that a lot of technical interview questions are really often use Fibonacci sequence um, for a number of reasons. But that's not the point of this tutorial today, so let's go ahead and um, get jump right into it. And so, basically, what my program is expecting to happen is I want the user to pass in a index position, which is this line up here, and I want it to return the Fibonacci value at that position. And so, when I pass in 9 on this first line, I expect 55 to be returned. And likewise, when I give it 6, I expect 13 to be returned. But let's go ahead and run the program and see what happens. We can see that we're not getting the values that we thought we were going to get. And um, maybe looking over this, it's not entirely clear why. Maybe we don't know why or even where to begin looking. Hopefully, we can kind of get a clue and have a feeling, a gut feeling, that it's probably so happening somewhere inside the for loop that's not um, getting set quite correctly. So what we're going to do is make a breakpoint. We do this simply by double-clicking at line 25. We can see it kind of highlights the whole line blue. This means that we want the program to stop here, and so we can examine what's happening from that point on once the execution gets there. So we're going to go into de to the debug mode, which is just to the left of the Run button. And when you click on this, it's going to open up our debugging perspective. We can see over here on the upper right, the debug is highlighted, and Eclipse calls this a perspective. And so um, you might get a little pop-up the first time you click on it asking if you really want to open the perspective. Go and click yes, and I like to have it remember. But anyways, um, going back to our, what, our screen of what we're looking here, we can see this line is highlighted green, and there's now a little arrow next to it. That means that this code has executed up to this point, and we can see all the values we have at this point. So we can see that 9 was the value for index that was passed in. And then we have these two pointers, which are going to help us keep track of what we need to add to get together. Um, and it, another interesting little note is that um, if we hover over variables, it will actually tell us what's the value in there. So that's also kind of a nice thing to see what's happening as you're keeping tracks. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the step functions now so we can see it as it executes. We have three options, which are step into, step over, and step return. Step into and step over are very closely related, so um, let's just show what the difference is. So I'm going to step into the for loop, and you can see the next line is highlighted green, and then we get our i value up here in our variables, they get added as we go along. So we're going to keep running into, click into. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit different between into and over. So we can see that here we're calling a method called add. So if we step into, we are going to jump to the add function, so we can trace the execution as it goes through the method. Um, then we're going to return, click it again, and it goes back to where it was. And then we continue stepping into. You can see it highlighted as it changed the value over here. It highlights yellow, which is kind of handy. So um, we're going to go through the for loop again. Now this time, instead of stepping into the add function, we're going to actually step over it, and we can see that we didn't actually go into the add function. So if we're confident the add isn't the problem, and we don't want to investigate if that's what's happening, we can go ahead and just step over it and keep going. And then the last one we have is step return, which is kind of nice if we just um, hit it. We can see that it just keeps going through the for loop without actually going into it. So we can see that um, our values increase over here on the right, and I believe um, Fib pointer 1 is the value that actually gets returned. Yep, so you can see there. So we can see what value is being returned, or what, what our val eventual value will be going into. So we keep going. 
and we loop through and then we come back here and um, step into and it's going to print out and so like I said this is a really powerful tool it gives us a really great idea of what's happening with just these three steps and everything I've told you now um, hopefully that's enough to let you bring in and just for complete sake um, to fix this the problem is actually th in our side of for loop it is inside of for loop we need to go equals to because we're actually starting with zero and so that um, needs to be less than or equal to index and so that's our quick overview um, let's go ahead and see it work I guess real quickly maybe get a little closure and there it works again we can see so I hope you found this useful and as always if you have any questions or comments please let me know thanks